What a bollock! Scott Arfield! He's been threatening that recently! And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end! Burnley win the next ball. It's to Rory now. It's on the outside. He's on the Quickly finds Benson in space at the byline. Can Burnley get a goal here? Back for Brownell. Saved by the keeper. Yeah! Yeah! Burnley won it to the end. That is magnificent. They deserve that. Only by Paul Fatella. Off for a hat trick. He's got it. Hat trick for Nathan Teller. Oh, he's on fire at the minute. 3 0 Burnley. It's Nathan Teller's day. And he's on the outside, comes inside, comes up a shot, oh what a goal, Manuel Benson once more, that is top class. Burnley have done it, fantastic, the Clarets deserve the championship title, they've been the best side throughout the campaign, Burnley have won the second tier, what a fantastic achievement, the players have been magnificent. Yes, hello everyone and welcome along to the latest instalment of the Turfcast podcast pre-game show with me, Joe Redman, head of the midweek clash over in the east, in fact, I'm going to say east riding of Yorkshire then. Ben, how would you prefer that to be introduced? Is it Humberside, east riding of Yorkshire? What is it these days? I can never... Um, I think it's, it's, it's just a mix of both. Whatever you yeah. prefer, to be honest. Whatever Whatever's easier. Right. I'd have been better off just saying Hull, wouldn't I? I'd have been better off just saying Hull. I should have just left it at that. Uh, But yeah, as you can see, if if you're watching, obviously you'll be able to see Ben already. If you're listening on the podcast, you will have heard his voice already. But I am joined by Hull fan Ben, who does a blog called Let's Talk Tigers and does some stuff uh, with the Championship Talk pod, I think it's called, isn't it, Ben? But yeah, welcome to the show, mate. How are you? You all right? Good, yeah. Glad to be here. Thanks for giving me the opportunity, yeah. No, thank you. And obviously, I always like to lift a little, little bit on how I get guests to my uh, viewers and listeners and stuff. Like, I, I'm in like a, a WhatsApp group with a lot of championship fans and, and the whole fan in that group couldn't do it this week. And I let down a little bit by him. So Ben's been an absolute saviour. I only messaged him around six hours ago. So thank you so much for on, mate. We appreciate you coming because it's not the same. I do every now and then do... Uh, pre-game shows without an opposition fan if I can't get one but it's just not the same because I like to use this to find more out about you because that's what I'm interested in I'm interested in Hull and how they're playing and who we need to be looking out for and things like that but before we get into all that mate talk to me about your season so far how, how's it been so far I mean I think if I could sum up in one word it would be confusing um, <laughs> there's been a lot of wins a lot of losses um started off not very well but then obviously had that three game period where we won through on the bounce scoring 10 goals yeah. um yeah it's been an interesting start um it's it's one of them seasons where you just don't know don't know what to expect don't know what's to come but i'm i'm hopeful uh, we'll say that yeah fair enough you mentioned then that that period of results. Now, obviously, my immediate thought when I was thinking of Hull before this is, oh, you lost last time out against Sunderland. To be fair, you could probably feel a little bit hard done to by the referee. I did see, um, who was it now? I think it was the second tier lad saying you were just mourning, but I thought the referee's got in the way. It's a rule, isn't it? You should be, it, it should be pulled back. But obviously, before that, um, like you said, you know, you, you've had a decent run of results. Uh, um, well, not before that, sorry, because obviously there was a Norwich result in there, but beating QPR 3-1, beating Cardiff 4-1 and beating Stoke City 3-1. How would you sum up your form at the minute then? Is it is it good or is it just a little bit average? Because obviously the last two results weren't great, but Sunderland, Sunderland and they're doing well. It's a battery against Norwich, admittedly. But before then, there's, there's three decent results in there, isn't there? Yeah, it's the recent form is, is strange. It's I think a lot of people have been commenting on it saying we've 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 sort of beaten the teams that were almost expected to beat like the the teams you'd expect to be mid table and below and then struggled quite quite a lot against the the top sides like our losses have come against Leeds, Sheffield United, Sunderland and Norwich so they are all tough tough opponents but 
Yeah, I mean, the last game out um, against Sunderland, we, I think we made a good account of ourselves. Um, we didn't yeah. make it easy for them. And obviously the one before that was just an absolute pasting against Norwich, unfortunately. But what can you do about that? They're a, a top side and I'm, I'm sure they'll probably be up there at the end. But yeah, the, the recent form is... I don't know. I don't know how to what to think about it because it's a bit here and there because we've obviously strung those three together and then on the on the back of two losses with with Burnley in town. So yeah, it's it's going to be a difficult one. Uh, I'm expecting that. Yeah, we'll get on to sort of like the game in a little bit. I just want to quickly keep talking about your season. Obviously, at the minute down in sixteenth, which. You know, it isn't too bad at this start of the season because it, the league is all very, at this stage of the season, isn't it? It always is every single year, very close together. Two or three wins will, will easily see you in the top six. Um, I think you are only four points off Norwich, who are in seven, for example. So two or three wins, you know, and if you beat, you know, I don't want to sound arrogant, but if you beat a team like Burnley, that's going to give you a lot of confidence. And then who knows, you may be able to put a few, a few results together. Uh, but what's your ambitions for the season? Because like I said, I am in a, a WhatsApp group. There is a whole fan in there. And I think he says it every single season, to be fair, but he always says we are outside shouts for promotion. Maybe we can sneak into top six, and that's what our aim is as a club. Is that what you, as fans and and your club, are looking for this season to try and be that club that sneaks into the playoffs? Um, I think this season, especially the the sort of general consensus is that we're almost in like a a bit of a building stage, and then next season might be the one where we eventually push on and actually should be almost nailed on for a playoff spot but yeah I think this season I'd personally expect in and around like 10th to 14th almost where we are at the minute to be honest because yeah. the the team is still very much a work in progress obviously we had I can't even remember the number of signings I think it was 16 or 17 in this window and obviously we had mm. Um, Philogene, Tufan, Greaves, all of our top players go last season or at the start of this season. So um yeah, I think I think the original optimism was there, but after we saw how we, we started off the season and obviously having a poor preseason, it just sort of I think everyone sort of settled with the fact that this one might not be quite as good as last season because obviously we were up there for the majority um, last season challenging for the top six, but obviously missed out just on the last day. Um, but yeah, I think being realistic, obviously I'd love to be, I'd love to to be in the playoffs. I'd love being in the top six in and around that area. But I think being realistic, it's it's more of a mid table and then look on to, to next season to hopefully get to that place. Yeah, fair enough. Obviously, uh, Tim Walter, is that how you pronounce it? I think being German, it might be Walter. Yeah, it's Walter, yeah, yeah Tim Walter. Yeah, so, so Tim Walter is obviously a manager at the minute, obviously replaced Liam Rossini, which raised a few eyebrows last season. What are your thoughts on the current manager? Um, do you know what? I'm not I'm not 100% either way. Uh, I'm still quite in the middle about it. I think... Maybe it was the right decision to to move on from Rossini, but it's um, the main point I I take from it is the fact that our owner has said this season he wants to do better than seventh, and where are we mm. currently? We're sixteenth. So yeah, I think I think he he has potential. It's just his his style of play is is very, as some people have described it, random. Like the 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 post match interviews after the the Sunderland game, I think it was Luco Nine and um, Chris Meppen both said they they can be random at times. So yeah, it's it's whether that style of play can hold up, and mm. if Premier League is our end goal, it's will that style of play convert into one that actually can survive in the Premier League? I'm I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. Yeah, well, obviously that, that's that's a debate that we keep having as Burnley fans, sort of like saying, can the Scott Parker style do well in the Premier League? Because obviously, if you remember, both Bournemouth and Fulham have sacked him. He lost famously 9-0 or 9-1 in the Premier League. 
But I always sort of like caveat that with let's get there first. Uh, so obviously, again, yeah. same for you guys. I won't worry too much about that at the minute until, until you get there. Um, obviously, you touched on it there briefly, the sacking of Liam Rossini. You said you feel like it might be the right decision. Obviously, you know Hull better than anyone watching this probably. Um, you definitely know Hull better than me. I looked at it with a raised eyebrow thinking, really? I thought you were building something there and could push on. But you think maybe it was the right decision. What, what were your thoughts on that sacking then? Um I, th- I still am not sure whether it was 100% the right decision. Um, mm. Obviously, he's, I think he's seventh, sixth or seventh with uh, Strasbourg in the French League now. Um, I don't know. I think he, like you said, he was he was building something. And I think we might have had a, a good chance of keeping some of the players from last season that were so key for us and then even... Mm extending loans or getting them back on a permanent um this season which had helped us carry on that momentum from the team which was working so well last year but yeah I don't I don't know because I think the owner came out and said um he wanted attacking football that was that was what we should expect from Tim Volta and it it's there at times like we've we've gone over the 3-1 4-1 3-1 back to back to back and then it's sometimes a bit kamikaze the way that we defend and the way that we like throw players forward for, for corners like you'd have seen against Sunderland and um yeah I'm not I think it's it's one which we could potentially regret in the future but at the minute I think I'm not sure. I think it is one we could regret, but yeah, I think we've just got to trust trust in Tim Volta and then hopefully we might be able to build on something this season. Yep, fair enough. Uh, just to go back to last season as well, I do want to ask you, obviously, because Burnley loaned you guys Anas Sorori. I just want to get your thoughts on Anas. Obviously, no longer a Burnley player anymore, playing out um, with RC Lens. Um, actually pushed a move through, apparently, according to... Um, the CEO of Burnley Football Club, who said it last week, to be fair, he didn't really want to be here anymore, which was uh, surprising to hear because the Burnley fans loved him, especially in that championship winning season. Like Some of the goals he scored away at Sunderland. Then he went to the World Cup with Morocco and never really hit form again. And I seem to remember Hull fans being a little bit frustrated with him. What were your thoughts on Zorora? Um, I think he did show his, his ability at times, but I think it, it might have been a case of the fact that he wasn't being played in the right position because obviously he was... Was he like a left left hand sided winger? Yeah, he played play left and mainly, but I think he'd play on yeah. right as well sometimes. And the the player we had in that position was obviously Jaden Philogene. So we had him and then we obviously had Fabio Carvalho coming in at the same time, which was absolutely bonkers. But yeah, I think he didn't quite give as much as we expected. Um mm. I think we expected him to almost light it up because the the expectation was from how well he'd done with Burnley the the last season you guys were in the championship, obviously storming it. Um, but yeah, I think it was a shame because I think he would have been able to to show how good he is um, if he'd been utilised properly. But I just don't think he really got the opportunity, unfortunately. Yeah, well, to be fair, like I said, when he went to the World Cup in Qatar with Morocco, he came back and never really did anything again for Burnley, really. Again, just showed glimpses. So I'm not sure if it was a, a mental thing, like he didn't really want to be here anymore. I guess if he pushed the move through, all right, fair enough, like some 18 months later, then then I guess ultimately he didn't. Um, I, I do want to move on as well quickly. I want to ask about your owners as well, because I'm always seeing stuff about your owners and, and people saying like how good they are and stuff. Um, but uh, there's always some sort of like, a section of a fan base maybe that aren't overly keen on them but every time I see something it's always positive stuff like they've paid for fan travel they've paid for fan beers uh, and things like that what are your thoughts on your current owners I think it's he's great um he's probably been the best thing to happen since like for the um last few years um obviously we were quite in like not the best situation with our previous owners the Alams um yeah that obviously created a void between the the club and the fans there was like lowest attendances we've seen in god knows how long and then obviously this this season and last we're averaging roughly around twenty thousand plus which is 
amazing when you compare it to the low teens to like eight nine thousand which we'd see a few seasons ago so yeah i think he's he's come in and he's 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 um he's promised a lot but i think he has delivered on quite a lot of it um he's obviously got the aspirations to take the club as far as as possible and i think he he's willing to do that as well he likes to to get involved with um transfers and stuff like that so he i think he he's he's good for the club um he's obviously good for the fans the fans like him like the general um opinion is that he's he's loved by the fans so yeah i think he's a great owner yeah, fair enough. I, I do get that feeling that he is he is mainly liked by the fans. I, I, to be honest, I don't think I've ever actually seen a Hull fan say anything bad about him. I just said the earlier thing because there's always somebody that's never happy. Um, but anyway, let's move on to, to Hull and, uh, and your style of play. Obviously, you've touched on it briefly already. You've said it can be random, but you've also mentioned that it can be quite attacking. How can we expect you to play? I guess you're not going to be one of these teams that just camps in their own half like we've seen away at Oxford, which was weird because I know Oxford have just come up and we've just come down. But to see a home team camp in their own half was so frustrating and weird. And ultimately, they got what we wanted because it was nil-nil. Blackburn did the same thing, but that was at the turf. Preston did the same thing, but that was at the turf. We do seem to be better against teams that want to try and attack us. And I do think you guys will do that. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, but I think... It's important to to note that um, the game against Sunderland, we did almost sit back and just soak up a lot of pressure. So it could well be a case of a similar sort of style um, tomorrow night. Um, to be honest, I won't be against that because I think you've got quite a lot of attacking talent that could very easily punish us if we play the quote unquote usual way that we play, which is... Um, like a lot of marauding runs from centre halves, and um, nine times out of ten, you'll only find one one player in midfield as the holding player, mm. and then that's it really. But yeah, um, it's widely described as like an expansive style of play. Um, there's a lot of free movement. Um, yeah, there's a lot to like about it, but there's also a lot to be concerned as well because sometimes it it just doesn't work um and you can see it doesn't work and us fans are thinking like please just just for the love of god change something about it but yeah it's it's an interesting one i think it'll be an interesting game that is for sure but we've definitely got the talent to to score and create uh, an attack we've got um some decent young players coming through as well which is a good sign so yeah it's interesting i'll say that yeah you, you say that about the attacking talent to be fair i think that's where burnley fans are looking at this squad and thinking that's where we are lacking i say that we have scored 16 goals this season but just to caveat that that's that's only one more than oxford for example we do however have the best defensive record in the league with only conceding four goals so far this season so but i do think that is partly down to the fact that some teams have come to burnley just said we are not playing any football whatsoever we do not want to play any football so it'll be interesting to see how you guys do and how you set up i'm thinking if we play like we did in the second half against Sheffield Wednesday we should have enough the first half against Sheffield Wednesday wasn't wasn't great to be honest with you um but I do what what I did like about that Sheffield Wednesday performance is that they came at us especially when we went 2-0 up so then we were able to dictate the pace of the game and, and getting behind and, and things like that whereas if you do sit back I think myself I said I think I speak for a lot of Burnley fans when I say I would be a little bit worried that we struggle to break you down because we've shown that a few times this season um Obviously, quite a new look whole side this year. You said earlier in the year there were sort of like 16 incomings, I think you said it was. Yeah. Um, so who who were the players that we should be looking out for, the players that Hull might be able to hurt Burnley with? Um, I think it is probably mainly the two wingers. Um, we've got Liam Miller on the left and then Mohamed Bellumi on the right. Um, Miller's just one of those wingers which is direct. He loves to get the ball at his feet and just run with it, run at defenders, and he... He is able to create quite a lot of chances. And then Balumi on the right hand side is sometimes is just magic. Um pulls a lot of stuff out of his hat. And yeah, it's it, he's very impressive. He's uh they're both pacey, very skillful. Um it's just at times we are lacking the final final ball or the final shot. Um so that might be a bit of a concern, but I think the the main 
area that we have um, is probably the, the wingers uh, on either side. Yeah, that's interesting because recently, having said that, Connor Roberts is back now, and I do think that changes things. But recently, we have looked a little bit susceptible at the fullback area. But having said that, like I said, we do have a very good defensive record. So it's just that sometimes teams can get at Perez, for example, who maybe not look great defensively. It was one of them fullbacks that looks better going forward. But like I've said, Connor Roberts is back in the side now on the right hand side. So that just shore us up a little bit. Um, I do quickly as well before we get into sort of like predictions and, and thoughts on how the game is going to pan out, like, uh, pan out, sorry, is your thoughts on Burnley and, and how they're set up and and what they're trying to achieve this season. Obviously, a bit of a change from Vincent Company Ball to Scott Parker Ball. It's going back more towards the kind of dash kind of, of football, probably a little bit more expansive than that, to be fair. Um, but it, it's I think um, it was described last week, Scott Parker was described last week as the middle ground by somebody at the club, as the middle ground between company and Sean Dyche. I think he probably leans more towards Sean Dyche, to be fair. Um, but what are your thoughts on Burnley and Scott Parker and, and us as a club? Um, I, well, I've got a mate who's a big Burnley fan and uh, I was lucky enough to, well, I, I say lucky enough, um, last season go and watch the, the El yeah, Sakaka Burnley home, versus yeah. Sheffield United. <laughs> What was it yeah. four three one or four one at Bramall Lane? So that was um four one, I think good, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Good experience watching company ball. But to be honest, I've not seen much of um Scott Parker ball, but I think from the recent record it's been quite low scoring. So yeah, um we've got a tough ask to break your defence down. Your is it unbeaten in the last seven? Um yeah, we've so, only lost a one one this season, and that was yeah the third game of the season uh, against Sunderland. Yeah, against Sunderland, yeah, um, yeah. I think it'll be a tough, tough task to break you down. Um, obviously, the lowest or one of the lowest um, goals conceded. Um, I think very strong defensively, which is a extremely important aspect of any team in any league. Mm. Um, I'm not sure on Scott Parker. Uh, I don't know if that feeling is is mutual or not, but yeah, I think he obviously has has got the quality of um, managing in a higher league uh, towards the top of the championship as well. But yeah, I think you'll definitely be up there, if not top two, definitely in the playoffs come the end of the season, I'd expect anyway. Yeah, it's interesting that you raised that about Scott Parker. In fact, just before I get into that, I just want to go back to a point I made earlier about us scoring 16 goals. Nine of them were in the first two games of the season. So since then, you know, it, it's not been great. And obviously since then, yeah. after the first two games of the season, that's when we sold a lot of our our players. Um, we saw a lot of people leave uh, that season. So, so since game three, in fact, since game... Because uh, we didn't score at Sunderland. So since the game after that, you know, we, we've not scored too many. It's, it's just been... Um, Seven in then games, but yeah, just going back to Scott Parker, it's it's, it's weird because fans always and Burnley fans as well. Like it's not just opposition fans. Like again, not to reference them twice because they are probably two of the most annoying people on the internet. But the second tier lads, they also say the same things as well that they're not really quite sure on him. And it's it's funny because the Sheffield Wednesday fans were saying at the weekend, "Oh, Burnley were nothing special. They won't go up," you know. But this is what Leeds said about us, and this is what a few teams are saying about us. We're not going to teams and doing what we did with Vincent Company and and. 100% control in the game, blowing teams away, passing you to death and playing free-flowing attacking football. We're just slowing the game down and just having good penalty box habits, which isn't great to watch and I guess makes people think that maybe, you know, tactically it's not all there. It, it may not be, but that might be a conscious decision from Parker. It's I personally, I, I'm still judging him. I, I think it's harsh to judge after nine, ten games. There are some fans that have already said Parker out, despite us currently... At the time of recording, to be fair, because Leeds have just gone above us, uh, by the way, because they are winning as I'm recording this. Fingers crossed they end up getting beat. Uh, but at the time of recording this, down in third, obviously starting the game week in second. So that's a bit of an overreaction. But um, yeah, the jury's out for a lot of Burnley fans, but I'm one of them. I'm minimum till Christmas, but it will 100%, I hope, uh, get the full season. Uh, you mentioned it already, like you're not sure how Hull will set up against us because you might sit back, you might come at us. What would you like to see Hull do against Burnley? Do you want to go at Burnley and, and and try and you know nick an early goal and you know maybe add a second to that, or would you want to just sit back and say you break us down, lads? Um, I think to be honest, it worked quite well the way we set up against Sunderland. We we did 
sit back and allowed them to have a lot of the ball and soaked up a lot of pressure and then we were able to get good opportunities on the on the counter which it could work but it's it's a different team it's a different game um whether the players are able to do it again for another 90 minutes just sit back and allow the ball um the opposition to have the ball um i don't know but i think it obviously would be nice to get an early goal but I feel like that would give you the incentive to to go on and try and um, push a lot harder. And I think that's that might be when we could struggle potentially because I think when we come up against a team with a lot of strength in attack and a lot of quality in attack, we do struggle. So, yeah, I think the wise choice would probably be to sit back almost like we did against Sunderland and then fingers crossed get something on the counter attack yeah it's interesting you say that again because i think the majority of Burnley fans if you say for example if you score in the first minute the majority of Burnley fans will think uh, be thinking well they're just going to sit back now and we're not going to score because we don't score against teams that, that sit back so yeah again obviously just pointing out the fact that we may have scored 16 goals but nine of them are in the first two and a lot of them aren't here anymore um so i think if you do get an early goal and sit back that might be a worry for us um Let's move on to predictions then. We'll start wrapping it up here then, mate. But I always like to ask for some predictions and sort of like give you reasoning behind them before I do end the show. Uh, so what do you think the score will be tomorrow, please, mate? Um, I think my heart is always with the City win. But I think being sensible, I'm going to go for a, a score draw. I think there'll be goals. There'll definitely be goals. But um, in between one all and two all, um, I can also see you steaming us um unfortunately but i'm gonna go in the middle and say one all i know it's a boring boring prediction but i'm going for a draw i'm not sure about steaming mate like i said we haven't steamed anybody since cardiff um all right to be fair we did steam Luton as well but again different different squad different team uh, i'm not sure we'll steam anyone again uh this season i think the majority of our wins will be one nil two nil two one and i think i think ultimately we'll have enough i do think ultimately we'll have enough i, I actually preferred us against sheffield wednesday than i have since all them sales or so since the cardiff game we looked better against sheffield wednesday especially in that second half especially the three games before that, because the nil-nil draw at Oxford, the slim 1-0 win at home against Plymouth and the nil-nil draw at home against Preston were awful. Like I, I tried to remain calm on some of my fan reactions, but they, they were poor to watch, mate, and, and just sit, teams sitting back against us. So, and we'd scored, like I said, just the one goal in them three. And no disrespect to them three clubs, but you would expect them three clubs to be battling relegation this season. We scored one goal against all them, and that was a penalty. Um, and, and you know, just before half-time, I had my friend texting me. I won't mention him because I know he listens and watches these. But I had my friend texting me saying, if we don't score again in this game, it's, you know, it's going to be five games with just one penalty. Thankfully, we ended up getting a fortuitous first goal, to be fair, but the second one was um, a little bit better. Um, but I'm going to go with something similar, a 1-0 Burnley win. I don't think we're steamrolling anybody, like I said. I think we may just kind of try and do what Sunderland did to you uh, and just dictate the pace of the game, pass it around you and hope for some openings uh, and hopefully get a win that way. Uh, but Ben, like I said, we will start wrapping it up there. But just before we do, do you want to let everyone know where they can find you in any of the Hull City content that you produce? Yeah, so I'm mainly on uh, Substack. That's where I put my um, match previews and reviews out on uh, Let's Talk About the Tigers. And I've obviously got uh, Twitter and Instagram, or X is not, it's now called X and Instagram as well. And then, yeah, do um, some Hull City reviews analysis on Championship Talk as well, which is on YouTube weekly. Yeah, happy days. Please do check them out, everybody. Uh, so, yeah, Ben, like I said, we'll wrap it up there. We'll wrap it up there. A big appreciation again for coming on the show. Like I said, it was short notice. But as I always say, good luck for the rest of the season. But obviously, after tomorrow. <laughs>